with that being said, actually, I want to go ahead and roll into that story. Let's get back to our articles. <clears throat> so this is from Forbes uh, Live. Zelensky blasts NATO for rejecting no-fly zone over Ukraine. So NATO knows better. And we're going to get to um, – to, so here's another one. Uh, Blinken and NATO chief – hang on one second – uh blinky i call i like to call him blinky because pepe escobar calls him that's hilarious uh blink and a nato chief warn establishing a, a no-fly zone over ukraine could lead to a full-fledged war in europe that means don't fucking do it but that means that raytheon and boeing are like do it <laughs> they're in the background like do it just they're like shia labeouf just do it <laughs> start world war three fuck everybody just do it Jesus fucking Christ. We're ruled by maniacs. We're ruled by maniacs who don't give a fuck. Um, so there you have that. So Zelensky was blasting NATO. I think this is a bunch of stories put together. Yeah. Let's get into it. I think I have a I have a Reuters story here about it. Um, Americans broadly support. Um, Ukraine no fly zone, Russia oil ban poll. So this is from a poll. This isn't like the government because as you saw Blinken, you saw Blinken's thoughts on it. Blinky, Blinky's <laughs> thoughts on it. But uh, Washington, uh, this is from March fourth. Um, a a from today, a broad bipartisan majority of Americans think the United States should stop buying Russian oil and gas and work with NATO to set up no fly zones to protect Ukraine from Russian airstrikes, according to Reuters. Uh, lips. Um, Ipsa, Ipsa's poll completed on Friday. The poll conducted Thursday and Friday suggests that the U.S. that U.S. outrage is growing over Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which in recent days has increasingly involved Russian bombing of urban areas. That puts pressure on United States President Joe Biden to take more aggressive actions against Moscow. Although he has dismissed the notion of a no fly of no fly zones because of the risk of open conflict between NATO and Russian forces, um, and it sounds like they did a poll of like a bunch of shit libs that's saying this, uh, and I'm I'm sure there's other Americans that are probably in favor of this, but they don't understand the, 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 the consequences of that action. So basically that means if they, if they do a no fly zone in Ukraine and a Russian, you know, if Putin and, 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 and it, you know, decides to decides to disobey that and he flies his a Russian, you know, ship in there or, or um, a Russian jet, whatever the fuck it is. And he flies it in there and they shoot that down. We are thus at war with Russia, which is automatically going to be a nuclear war. And that's, that's the apocalypse. That's the end of everything. So the people that are cheering this on, um, equate them to, you know how they like to call you a conspiracy theorist? Equate them to worst. Equate them to the homeless guy that's in the street yelling about the second coming of Christ. Tell them to go fuck themselves, <laughs> basically is what I'm saying. You can go fuck yourself with that. Tell them Bindu told, told, you know, told you to say that to them. Um, it was not clear if respondents who supported a no-fly zone were fully aware of the risk of conflict, and majorities opposed the idea of sending American troops to Ukraine or conducting airstrikes to support the Ukrainian army. <clears throat> and again, something like that would actually go against NATO's charter because it doesn't create like part one of uh, one of the things that NATO's charter is, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't know it like verbatim word for word, but um, basically it, to induct a country into nato like ukraine like inducting a country cannot jeopardize the safety of other countries that are already in nato so if we're talking about the safety of countries within nato like doing a no fly zone for a no for a non nato member like puts you know the security of other countries in jeopardy that literally goes against the charter of nato and what is there for and it's like the fact that the european countries are all happy and willy-nilly to go along with this is nuts it's nuts this is going to hurt nobody but europe if all out war breaks out in Europe, where it's like ground troops and shit, it's, you know, it's going to it's going to affect Europe and then it's going to spiral out of control and involve the United States and spiral into a full on nuclear holocaust. And you have dick bags here in America cheering it on. Um, some 74 percent of Americans, including solid majorities of Republicans and Democrats, said the United States and its allies in the North Atlantic and NATO should impose a no fly zone in Ukraine, the poll found. And um, an equally bipartisan 80 percent of Americans said the United States should stop buying Russian oil. The White House on Friday said it was weighing cuts um, to U.S. imports of Russian oil, and that's going to make gas prices go up. So congratulations to the to the fucking dumbass, the, the dumbass Republicans 
that are bitching about bitching to rightfully so about the uh, rise in, gra- in gas prices under Joe Biden, you're you you are officially dumb. <laughs> Congratulations, you played yourself. You're an idiot. <laughs> I don't even know if I believe this poll because I, I, I've noticed a lot. So there are um, conservatives, even like the Trump conservative crowd and everything that are that are being duped by the by the shit going on in Ukraine. They're being duped by it. They're being duped into being, you know, um, spewing pro-war narratives. I've even seen a couple of people, you know, I, I did the video debunking a lot of the stories that's been being passed around. Like my my timeline is rife with them, bro. Still has been. It's kind of calmed down since a lot of the, a little bit since a lot of those stories have been debunked. But I still see them, and and before people knew they were fake, um, they were sharing them all willy nilly. And I'm and at first my thing was you're probably cheering on a Nazi because I know that you know their military is infested with Nazis, with neo Nazis. But now that I know the stories are fake, whenever I see, it, I'm like, dude, you're posting a fake story. People still post like the Zelensky, Zelensky on the front lines. This is a real like they have the picture of like Zelensky and then it's Ted Cruz. I'm like, dude, you know that's fake, right? That picture is from like a year ago. <laughs> he, I don't like I said, I don't believe Zelensky is in the front is on the front lines. I don't believe he has control of his country, to be completely honest with you, especially after reading this gray zone article where it talks about how how much power like even though. So the. My bad, I thought I heard something, but the neo-Nazi groups that are um, in Ukraine. My bad. The um, neo-Nazi groups that are in Ukraine, they don't talk about how influ- how much you know inf- influence they have and how much power they had in the in Ukraine and within the government and the military. They were like just flat out disobeying orders from this motherfucker. <laughs> so again, I'm going to be covering that on the Monday stream. Look out for it. But yeah, so Americans are being duped right now, as usual. Um, and equally bipartisan, eighty percent of Americans at the U.S. So we. Uh, Though it is proceeding cautiously, I'm concerned about a spike in gasoline prices that would add to high inflation. Moreover, 81 percent of Americans uh, think Washington should impose additional sanctions on Russia, up from 77 percent in a Reuters um, Ipsos poll conducted on Monday and Tuesday. Support for more sanctions was um, also bipartisan. Some 77 percent of respondents said the United States um, states should seize the assets of Russian oligarchs um, associated with Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin. Pressure is growing on Biden to ramp up economic pressure on Russia by targeting its massive exports of oil and gas. Some Western leaders worry such an approach could trigger a global (coughs) energy crunch and possibly escalate the conflict. (laughs) Um, Let's see. 70%. Uh, Uh, However, some 62% of respondents in a Reuters Ipsos poll said paying more for fuel and gas prices um, of the crisis was worthwhile to defend another. (laughs) This is the bullshit narrative I was talking about earlier. Then you go pay that shit. Go, you pay that shit. And a lot of the people saying this shit, the 62% probably work from home since COVID. They work from home or, you know, they, they live in an urban area so they can walk to work or ride a bike to work. They don't actually have to fucking drive to work like most working class people do. Th- that's elitism. That's the bullshit that a lot of the Trump crowd talks about. Fuck those people <laughs> that, that are saying that. Fuck you. I have to drive to work, bitch. It's not worthwhile for me. I don't want to have to pay $7 in gas to defend uh, to defend Nazis. That's what you're doing. I'm not saying democratic country because they're not. Ukraine is not a democratic country. Ukraine is not a sovereign nation. They haven't been since 2014, since the United States has been hand handpicking their government ever since 2014. So, no, I don't I don't want to pay like seven, eight dollars in gas so we could prop up fucking Nazis in Ukraine to fuck with Russia and and egg on World War Three and and a nuclear holocaust. No, fuck you with all due, with all due disrespect. Go fuck yourself. You see increasing willingness among the American public to pay costs for that support of Ukraine. Say, Craig, yeah, fuck you. Most respondents in the Reuters Ipsos poll, 72 percent, said they believe the United States should provide Ukraine with weapons. Guess what? You got your wish. We already fucking have. We have been weapons that they've been using to kill people in in the Donbass regions in mass for over 14,000 kids this whole conflict started because they um between the dunbas and and the you know proper ukraine and well not proper but and the ukrainian government this whole thing started because the, the nazi battalions um basically burned people alive inside of a union hall <laughs> so that's how this whole conflict between the dunbas and you know and, and the ukrainian government the the, the uh, nazi infested ukrainian government and now with russia that's how this whole conflict started 
The United States has pledged to boost weapons uh, shipments to Ukraine, whose forces have put up more resistance to Russian forces um, than many experts initially expected. Biden has also asked the U.S. Congress to approve an additional $10 billion in the humanitarian aid for Ukraine. So this is exactly what Ice Cube was talking about um, during the election. This is what Ice Cube was talking about. Like that, they gave trillions of dollars to their buddies and on Wall Street and shit. Like that, they get they're giving ten billion dollars to fucking Nazis in Ukraine. But you want healthcare? Ah, uh, well, see the way you know the way this shit works. Um, go fuck yourself. You're you know die from die from cancer. You know um go into debt because of your medical bills. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself. That's what your government tells you. That's what the United States government tells you every day. Go fuck yourself. And you even have places that do have single payer healthcare, like Canada. Um, you know, the European countries, they're severely defunding them um, to increase more spending in war. That's just how it works. So they could give $10 billion like that. But when it comes to the American people, go fuck yourself. They do the same thing with, with Israel as well. And 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 the Israelis literally use their, use their shit to bomb people in their houses, to bomb women and children in their houses and innocent people in their fucking houses and say that they're defending themselves. So whenever there's like a breakout of war between Hamas and, and, and Israeli government, it's always lopsided. It's usually always like two or three, maybe 10 innocent Israelis that get killed. And then it's like 50 to 100, sometimes in the thousands of Palestinians that get killed. Innocent. It's fucking ridiculous. Some 74% of Americans said their country should take Ukrainian refugees. A level of support, Kafir said, was surprising. Yeah, because they're white. <laughs> that's another thing that's been going on, too. That you, like, I've talked about that. Um, how you have... No, I didn't talk about that. I, I forgot to do that story. I, did, I, for, I forgot to do it. I'm, gonna do it. I'm going to do it on Monday. But you have like a lot of the newscasters saying, like, oh, this isn't like you know the Middle East. You know, Europe isn't used to this type of thing. Da, da, da. Like, you know, um, these people aren't uncivilized. Like, they, they've literally been saying shit like that. It's like, bitch, first of all, um, you know, the Middle East is literally the cradle, along with Africa, is the cradle of, of civilization. Civilization started there. <laughs> they have they have um, architecture in, in Africa and in the Middle East that cannot be recreated to this fucking day with our modern technology. So you're talking about uncivilized people. Go fuck yourself, first and foremost. But, you know, on that note, go fuck yourself. But then on, on the other note of go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, these countries were, you know, becoming civilized after being ravaged by colonialism. And then because um, Western corporations wanted to come and monopolize the resources and imperialize most of you dumb fucks that call yourself communist and shit like that. And Marxist Leninist don't even know what the fuck Lenin had to say about imperialism and don't understand imperialism. They run a Russia's an imperialist country, so we have to do something because they're go fuck yourself, you dumb fucks. <laughs> take that hammer and sickle out your profile. If you're if you're cheering on Ukraine right now, take the hammer and sickle out your profile, you dumb fuck. But um don't understand imperialism. Like they, they've been imperializing this region of the world, Africa and then the Middle East for so long, monopolizing these places. And even countries like Syria and shit like that, that started to um, that, that that was, um, you know, um, um, in some regards, westernizing, but but um, improving, you know, they, they went from being able to getting um, uh, uh, power, you know, certain hours of the day to it being ran 24 hours. Then the Civil War happened, spurned on by the United States government. Um, you talk about countries like Libya. Libya was the wealthiest country on the face of the African continent. Um, you know, Gaddafi, there's so much. Shit. I'm, I'm actually going to do a segment about Gaddafi probably next Wednesday because I wanted to. I, I've been very fascinated by by Libya, what he was doing in Libya. But one of the reasons why they killed him is because he wanted to take the um, the, the dinar. He wanted to make like a, I think it's called the African I think Libya's currency was called the dinar or something like that. And he wanted to take the take the dinar and make it the the currency for all of Africa and cut the dollar out and basically trade with their own with Africa. Basically, he was trying to create an African currency um, to, to shut out the United States, who's been fucking and, and, and the West, who's been impoverishing their country for their countries for centuries. That's one of the reasons why they killed him. But you take a country that is the most prosperous, wealthy, well-off country on the face of the African continent, and they destroy it and turn it into a fucking, fucking terrorist-infested shithole. <laughs> it, this is insanity. It's ins it's fucking insanity. But that's they want to take those people in because they're white. That's what it is. You have African students that are studying in Ukraine right now. They're not being allowed to leave because they're only allowing Ukrainians in the countries like Poland and all of these other different countries. They're fucking they're there because they're white. That's why they're, they're willing to take them. I'm not surprised by that here in America. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all because they're doing it in Europe.
and liberal democracies that are tolerant. Fuck out of here. Suck my dick. Go. Go. Uh, Biden's handling of the crisis. Biden's handling of the crisis is getting better marks with 45% uh, percent approval from the public, up from 34% last week. Uh, but it is unclear if this will lift his overall approval rating, which has been below 50% since, since August. Um, a separate Reuters Ipsos poll earlier this week showed Biden's overall popularity was near was near the low point of his presidency, a warning sign for his Democratic Party ahead of the November 8th midterm congressional elections. The poll on Ukraine was conducted. It's going to be a bloodbath. I'm just letting you know right now. It's going to be a bloodbath. And then 2024, um, it's either going to be De um, fucking DeSantis or Trump, unless some other guy rises up in the Republicans, but it's either going to be fucking DeSantis or Trump. The poll on Ukraine was conducted online and in English throughout the United States. It gathered responses from 831 adults and has a credibility um, interval, uh, a measure of precision of four percentage points. So this is nuts. That's nuts. They're, they're effectively, if that poll is to be taken seriously, they're effectively propagandizing Americans. <laughs> they, that's what they're doing. 